You want to learn how to do a trick that requires no practice? No rehearsal, we do it live. 100% live. All right, yeah. you've never met before, right? Awesome. For this trick, actually, never mind, I'll just start over. I forgot I needed something. <laughs> we are meeting right now for the first time. Totally. It's not like we live together. No. Shh. Bless you. Never. Never. Okay, we're back and better than ever. All right, Ray, who I've never met. This is the last time I'm going to touch these cards for this trick. You're going to do everything the rest of the trick. So the first thing I'd like you to do is mix them up. If you can shuffle them, great. I don't know. You can just give them a little mixy. Just make sure that I don't have them pre-ordered. Trust me to shuffle them. I'll shuffle them on your behalf. But I, I wouldn't have to. I just have trust issues, and so I must. <laughs> uh, while you're doing that, do you prefer red or black? Black. Black. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of red. Do you, you don't want to change your mind? You want to stick with black? Sure. Okay. I'm going to write a prediction on this napkin that I totally had to start this off. I forgot I needed something. Totally. Near, 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 near. Dead time is terrible for magic. Yeah. Also, writing on a napkin is hard. On this napkin, which I have folded up, I have written a prediction. This prediction also goes to you. All right, we're going to look at that at the end. Okay. All right, here we go. What I would like you to do is turn up two cards right on the table. There you go. Okay, those are two red cards. And you said you preferred black, so I'd like you to move those into a pile for me. And you're gonna go through the whole deck like this. Turn out two more. That's a red and a black. Move those into a discard pile. Neither of us get those. Again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, two reds go to me. Oh, wait, your color's red. Mm hmm because you, you chose black. Now, you could have taken red. I probably wouldn't have anyways. But you could have, is the point. I wouldn't, I, two blacks, those go to you. Those go into a pile for you. Mm -hmm. Two blacks go to you. Two reds go to me. Yeah. It's a black and a red. Black, that's a discard. You have two reds to me. You could have taken red or black. I'd have no way of knowing that you would have taken black. Not only that, you mixed up the cards when I gave them to you. Yep. And I that haven't was... touched the cards since. Okay, done. Okay. So, go ahead and count the cards in your pile. Come in. Ten. Ten. Go ahead and count the cards you in your pile. You can recount them if I don't trust myself. That's how bad my trust issues are. I can't even trust myself. Fourteen? Fourteen. Okay. So, I have fourteen. You have 10. Okay, do I count these two? No, no that's fine. Those are just discard. Now, right. you chose your color. Yeah. You mixed up the deck. Yeah. I haven't touched the cards. Yeah. So I'd like you to open up the napkin and look at the prediction I wrote ahead of time. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid? You it says you, have four, you will have four fewer than me. I'm afraid. Eh. Oh, he's hard. Wait, let me go grab some kind of cross. The demon, the <laughs> demon, it's a demon. Hey JT, how did you do that banger of a card trick? Well, it turns out the secret is math. It's math based. So remember back in the day when you told your guidance counselor, I'm gonna be a magician, I don't need math. <laughs> don't you look like an idiot now? Actually, a lot of really good magic is math-based. There's equations for where cards go when you do a pharaoh shuffle. Uh, some of the greatest magicians ever, like Percy Diaconis, Alex Elmsley, they were experts in math. And I know in the case of Alex Elmsley, he had a PhD in math. And so a lot of what they did was math-based. So stay in school, kids. Me? I studied music in college. I can only count to four. That's how easy this trick is. So, in a deck, once you have removed the jokers, the blank card, and your duplicate king of clubs, which definitely didn't cause me to take a retake on the performance. Yeah. There are 26 of each color. So let's imagine I take out four black cards. Well now if I just discard every pair of red and black all the way down, eventually I'm just going to have four red cards remaining, just left over. And so if I were going through the deck and it was perfectly mixed like that, at the end I would just have two sets of reds. If I come up with a pair of two blacks, well now I've got six extra red cards, and eventually I'm going to find three more pairs of reds. So the tr secret to this trick is before it starts, you take out four black cards. That is it. And you put them in your pocket. No matter how much they shuffle, if you go through the process that you saw in the performance, where every pair of black cards goes into a pile, every pair of red cards goes into a pile, and every red and black goes into a discard, you're eventually going to come up with four more red cards at the end. Now what you'll notice 
is that when I was letting Ray shuffle the cards, it was then that I asked them, do you prefer red or black? Now, they said they preferred black, so I said, you will have four fewer cards than I, because I knew I was going to be getting the red ones. Had they said red, I would have said, you will have four fewer cards than I, because I would then be getting the black cards. And that is it. The trick is done at that point, and it slays, and it requires no practice. Now, when I say it requires no practice, it requires no practice on the technique. However, magic is not just technique. It requires practice on presentation. You need to know what's coming up next. You need to know the right things to say at the right times. For instance, now I know I have a... Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your camera. Now I know I've alluded to this in videos on my Patreon, not sure I've done it on YouTube, but it's the weirdest thing. You can actually tell spectators what to remember, and they will. And you can even tell them to remember something that never happened, and half the time they will. Now in this case, you're reiterating the fairness of the trick. I haven't touched the cards. You shuffled them. I had no control. You picked the color. Look how little control I have. And it's true. You have no control over the order of the cards, but from the outset, you still have control over the trick. Now, if they ask you to do this trick again, what you want to do is square up the deck, palm those black cards out of your pocket, and just reassemble them, and then let them shuffle. And the next time you will predict a tie, because that's how it's going to come out. And it looks even better then, because you've got a different result. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this trick. I hope you perform it for your spouses, nieces, nephews, kids, friends, enemies, and that it slays, and that you get a good taste for what it feels like to do magic. Maybe for some of you, this self-working type trick will get the magic bug in you, and you'll want to learn a little more advanced stuff. Thank you, as always, to my patrons, who not only make it possible for me to do this, but who make it possible for me to do shows for free that need to be done for free. If you want to support me on Patreon, there'll be a link in the description. I post extra tutorial videos over there. You can get one-on-one -on -one coaching with your magic. Just support me at the higher tiers. I will invent tricks for you and record tutorials for how you can perform them. But thanks for swinging by, guys. I really appreciate it. And here's the latest thing I've posted to Instagram on your way out. Bye.